Good morning. Greetings to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are so privileged to be in the presence of God. And this is a brand new day. And before we begin the activities of this day, before we fill our ears with so many other voices, let us fill our minds and our ears with the voice of God by listening to his word. I am reading from Isaiah chapter 42 verses 6 and 7. These two verses says, I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles. To open eyes that are blind. To free captives from prison and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. And may the Holy Spirit enlighten us to understand his word. There are four words I like to take from this passage. Number one, called. Number two, kept. Number three, held. And number four, used. Or let me put it this way, called, held, kept, used. All are called. First, let, me th let us think of this call, the word call. All are called, yet all have not responded to the call. And I, Isaiah chapter 49 verse 1. Isaiah 49 verse 1 says, Listen to me, you islands. Hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, the Lord called me. From my birth, he has made mention of my name. All are called. John 3.16 makes it very clear. For God so loved the world. Now this world means world of humanity. The world of people. He loved people, everyone, regardless of one's nationality, language, color, culture, etc. And uh, the prophet call out, Listen to me, you islands. That's the verse we have read just now. Before I was born, he says, The Lord called me. From my birth he has made mention of my name. This is a prophecy concerning the calling, the Messiah, for his mission. The calling of Messiah for his mission. Jeremiah was called by his name and appointed him as a prophet to the nations before he was born. God knows each one of us very personally and intimately uh, because he calls us by our name. Isn't that wonderful? He knows my name. You can say that too. He knows my name. Everyone is called to salvation. This call to salvation is a call to holiness. A holy living. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 2. Chapter 1 verse 2. To the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy, together with all those who everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this call of God to salvation and this salvation call is to a life of holiness. And uh, those who respond to this call are considered saints of God. 
in Romans chapter 1 verse 7. Romans chapter 1 verse 7 says, To all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, a call to holiness and those who respond to this call will be called saints. And my friends, who is a saint? A saint is a person who is united with Jesus Christ and uh, living a holy life. And so the saints are called, the, uh, the holy people are called the saints. And uh, to all in Rome, the Bible says, loved by God and called to be saints. God has a perfect right to call us. We belong to him by creation and we belong to him by redemption. He owns us. We are here only because of Him. And then we, we, we were lost to Him because of sin. But then He purchased us with His blood in redemption. And thus by creation we are His, by redemption we are his. We are called by God in heaven. Remember your calling is a heavenly calling. It is a divine calling. And therefore it is a supernatural calling. And when you respond to this call of God to come to him in humility and in repentance, and surrender yourself to him and to his lordship. Suddenly the divine power will change you, transform you, and you go through a change in your life. You become a new creation. That is what it means to follow Jesus. You are a new creation. So that is our calling. This calling makes you new, transformed into his likeness. That is our calling. And our ultimate calling is to be like Jesus Christ, God's Son. The second thing I want, the word I want to uh, talk about is, we are not only called, we are also held. It means what? It means a fellowship and a friendship. It means intimacy. It means a companionship and intimacy. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 13. 41 13 says, For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. What a mighty God. The Lord God Almighty himself is saying to you, do not be afraid. I will take your right hand and I will guide you. I will lead you. I will protect you. I will provide you. Isn't that a great God, my friends? We are held. This is an expression of sonship. We are held close to his heart. And that means we are precious to him. He has adopted us to be his sons and daughters. That's what, whom, sh sh whom will we hold? We hold those who are precious and close to us. My friends, 
the love of God has reached out and adopted us and given us all the privileges of heaven, the heavenly blessing. And so that is the meaning of we are held. So we are called by the Lord God Almighty. We are held by His love and embrace. And third word is we are kept. Now, it means preservation. Here we need to understand the meaning of uh, kept. We are kept from what? We are kept not always from temptation, not from trials, not always from sorrow, not always from afflictions, not always from crosses and losses, but kept in and through it all. And that is what it means. On a tomb, on a tombstone, simply a name and one word was found after the name, kept. Now that is a very good way of having a tombstone. We are kept not to go through it all and perish, but we are kept in and through it all for the resurrection day and taken into eternity to be with the one who has kept us for the purpose of taking us to himself in heaven and then receiving our reward. And what is our reward? We are going to reign with Christ in his kingdom. We are going to judge angels. And we are going to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, we who are following Jesus, do not be disheartened by the trials and oppositions and persecutions today. Remain faithful and loyal till death. There is an eternity and an eternal blessing. It doesn't say that uh, God is going to save us and protect us from trials, from persecution, from difficulties, from the fire from the floods. No. He is not going to save us from all these things. But He is going to save us in the midst of it all. He will be present with you in all these things. And lastly, the fourth word is we are used. Now we are alive today to serve Him. Why are we in this world? If heaven is our home, as soon as we got saved and baptized, he should have taken us into a heavenly abode. But he kept us in this world. And uh, why are we here in this world? We are here in this world to serve him and doing his will and um, fulfilling his commission to us to go everywhere and declare this good news of God's salvation for everyone. That's why we are here. So that when, we, when He comes and takes us and when we see Him, what do you want to hear? What do I want to hear? Or many people say, Oh, when I see Jesus, I'm going to ask you this, ask Him this, I want to ask Him this. But my friends, I tell you one thing, when you ultimately stand before him and see him, you will have no speech. His glory is such. But I tell you what, he is going to speak. 
you are going to hear him say something. What do you want to hear? One thing you want to hear is, well done, my good and faithful servant. Do you want to hear that? Or you want to hear, I don't know you, depart from me, you cursed. Oh yes, it is up to us, my brother, my sister, boys and girls, as to what we want to hear. If we want to hear the first statement I said, well done, my good and faithful servant. If you want to hear that, then remain in the will of God. Do the will of God. Live the will of God and look forward to seeing him face to face. We need to be available, therefore. We need to be faithful servant. We need to be available to the Lord to be used by the Holy Spirit. In Athens of old, there was a law. Anyone who had a lighted candle and refused to allow another to light his candle from it, from your candle, that act was punished by death. Has God lighted your life? And with your life and light, many more receive the light of his life. That is the purpose. As Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Let us truly be the light of the world and please him. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making us your light to shine upon this earth. This earth is full of darkness, but in the midst of it, you have kept us to use us as your light and let us shine for your glory. Amen. God bless you, my friends. This is a good day. Enjoy this day and have a wonderful day. Amen.